that's not with me. But no. I got, I got me some monkey shoulder, which is part of the glue for the gift I put for you tomorrow. Okay. Now I have my set of monkey shoulder. Are we ready to start? Yeah, so? Yeah. I like it when we have a countdown or something. So it's really for sure. One, four, three, two, one. <laughs> there. There's your countdown. All right. So welcome everyone to. <laughs> Book 14 of Sci-Fi on Ice, and today we're going to talk about um, a book a book called mm. that, that Only a Mother by Judith Merrill from Canada. What? Actually, she was born in Boston, but she... But she moved to Canada, I think, like in to protest the Vietnam War or something, and I think, and then she spent the rest of her life there. And oh, okay. and Dean, you're like this. She did have a pen name, and it was Cyril Judd. I thought so for that era. I don't know. I'm not. Yeah, like the 19th century. I come across like. Like authors from the nineteenth century, you come across it a lot, but in like the second half of the twentieth century, less I would think. But but hey, right? Yeah, yeah. I obviously okay. didn't. I haven't experienced you know those times when things were changing. I guess. And Good job. yeah, I didn't. I've only read the story that we're going to talk about today. That only a woman, but uh, I did like a bit of like a bit of a googling to see. Oh, she's written quite a well. She's written, you know, um, her, most of her works have been in science fiction, and she's um, well, she's mostly known as an editor for, uh, professionally, but uh, but some people say she's a pioneer for women in the sci-fi genre. So. Uh, and I did look at some of the other titles, which I thought, you know, sparked a bit of interest, and so I might check. I might check out more of her stuff later. But uh, as without talking about other stuff, let's talk about the book that we read. Um, what do you guys think of it? Oh wait, wait. So that the the gist of the story is that um, it's about a mother having a baby and. And I take it that there's a bit of postpartum depression and we see the interaction between her and her husband and there's, we've got nuclear fallout, um, radiation and this idea about mutations with babies and yeah, that's the gist of the story. Um, what do you guys think of it? Dean, do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Um, well, it, it was definitely a quick read um, compared to some of the, the other books we've read. Uh, but I think I think it was probably the the little journal entries or the uh, the telegrams that, that the the main character sends, which kind of broke it up a little bit. Um, it was kind of like you you're fast forwarding the whole time, um, which was you know, something that's just a different different style, which was I wouldn't say it was bad or good, but it, it was just different. Um, well, what do you mean by yeah, that? It was it definitely gave you the impression that time was well, for me it felt like the time was moving a lot faster than maybe it would have in just regular it was just regular text. What what do you, I, I mean I get the faster bit, but what did, did that have any meaning for you? Did, or did you did you get anything from that? Um, I, I don't think I got anything from it, but I definitely didn't get something for it. From okay. It. Um, yeah. Okay. I, I felt like it like it it left a lot of gaps. I don't know the, the meaning behind it, but for me, when I was reading it, like there's there's definitely gaps left, which is which is probably you know part and 
part of the the style that this particular one is written in. But but yeah, that that was more of a annoyance than than anything else. But uh, but yeah, right. overall it was a, a pleasant read and yeah. Oh, that's interesting because I, I I um yeah I, I um I definitely agree with you about the um the timing thing, but I. But I definitely uh, have a different take on that. And as I mentioned, the postpartum depression thing, I, I think, um, which I'll, I think I might talk about a bit later, but, um, but you know, I think that was significant um, in that respect to the pace, the pacing of the story, which I thought was all right. And in some respects, this, okay, so first of all, my take on the story was that it was difficult for me to read because it's like, horrific right so it's like you know you don't put that book down going oh yeah i like it like i the feeling after it was one of sort of anguish and and horror and you wouldn't want to be in that situation and not to mention the nu- the nuclear um fallout and the you know when she's she's reading the news right to get the assurance about oh yeah there's been no um mishaps or no you know no bad news today and that and uh so if this is like a good thing in life. Oh, there's been no, um, what was it, misses and no accidents, um, that says in it. So, for me, it's like it was a really tough short for a short book. It's really tough to sort of um, walk away from it. Um, and so, now this is not me saying it's good or bad. It's a, um, I guess it's like one of those hard hitting things. And as as someone who's experienced being a partner of someone who's had postpartum depression, like that, like, you know, that hit me, um, that hit me a lot. So it was sort of a, you know, on one hand I could relate to being on the other side to it of, of this, uh, of our protagonist, the woman who has a baby. And, uh, I, so yeah, I, it's weird. It's like, I, I can't immediately say like, Oh yeah, I love the story because you know, it made me, it reminded me of all the of some crap things about life, so it's it's hard hitting, I guess, is what the story is. So, was that a take or not a take? Anyway, Sarah, what what did um, what do you think? Um, yeah, I I enjoyed it. Um, generally, I think it was interesting in that it kind of kept the twist to, to right to the end when you kind of you are kind of the the husband and you're seeing things from their his perspective because you're getting the letters um addressed to hank as though you are reading them from her there's a little bit of narrative um i guess to fill in the gaps but most of the information comes from these letters and that's when yeah you you can see like it's something that definitely is wrong with the child um because a the baby comes early and also develops um, because she has a four-year-old mind and a 10-month-old baby, a uh, body, sorry. Um, so obviously, like, there is a mutation, but you think, oh, it's fine because it's just internal. Um, and because the author, the protagonist, keeps saying, like, but my baby's fine. Um, it's that, okay, she's just proud. So that, yeah, when you are, the husband comes back and witnesses that this woman has gone insane um, because she's not facing reality, um, whatever the reason may be, she's just, she's not accepted reality and she hasn't come to terms with it. Um, I think that was, yeah, really interesting. Um, but I, I like how the author has like put in clues and set the context so you understood the environment in which this woman is living and how stressful and like desolate it is as you say um because i mean what did you say it was written in 1941 so i found that it's 1948 sorry so yeah after after hiroshima yeah that's what i was just about to say um so then there's this awareness very very much in the news of you know what's going to happen where does this lead what does it all mean 
and the impacts of that. Um, so, yeah, everything was very interesting. Um, but I think it takes knowing the context of the story a little bit and knowing that it's from that year um, and that puts it more, makes it more, I think, interesting. Yeah, well, that was one of the um, uh, the points of the story that I that I thought um, that made me think of the time of when it was written because this this is telling me that this is something that people thought about was that you know nuclear um, uh, bombs might you know have all these side effects to humans and which is told that you know mutations in babies' development, fe- fetal development, and and so this is something that people thought, you know, what if, or what if we keep these bombs keep going off and then humans, uh, humans are sort of, they're forever sort of fraught with this possibility of like generations of, or like populations of people with just deformed limbs because, uh, because of, um, this, these horrific acts that we're doing to, to each other. And so that, but we don't think of it today, right? Cause, but you know, the cold war, was essentially cold and 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 uh, and then we don't we didn't have these uh, nuclear trade uh, like exchanges and uh, and then we don't we didn't have all these uh, results of babies with me, uh, undeveloped limbs because of because of this um, a lack of rather the nuclear bombing so so we're lucky that we didn't grow up with classmates of um, unformed limbs, but this is something of that time that they would have thought, you know, we might, this is, this is something that will challenge the society at the time and, and, uh, not least postpartum depression, which combined with it, you know, I could see the challenges there for, for the, uh, our protagonist, the mother who, is I guess she's kidding herself, right? Like so in postpartum depression, the the uh, you, and so I don't really want to prescribe what what it is like to be through because it's obviously experienced different from different mothers. But uh, if I got the impression in this story that the character was she was like selectively listening to what she wanted to hear, like when the doctor was saying, you know mutation blah 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 mm. your but your body uh, the baby is healthy and so those uh mm. those uh those comments she was just like oh my but you know my, the heart rate is fine yeah the face has got two eyes but you know she doesn't say oh yeah and that the arms and legs are all fine she's just you see that so you imagine the baby's wrapped up in blankets and she's holding the baby and the baby's looking at it and she's just um you, you think marveled with with this sight but she's in denial about the fact that it's it is not fully developed yeah because even in the hospital when she wanted to see the baby she had to really like convince them to let her mm. um so obviously yeah there was reluctance there and because you're left it ignorant you you can't imagine what it is um but i get i mean you i obviously i don't have any experience with it myself but I don't, I didn't think postpartum depression immediately because I thought she sounded like she was already unstrung in some way before the birth because they were, she said how she can't be left alone with her thoughts and that she would end up being one of those neurotics if, you know, she was just at home all the time. So I got the impression that she was already quite delicate, you know, for like before um, because she was keeping busy, right? She had to move through different departments, so she was still working. Um, because everyone had to be of use all, as much as they could. So it wasn't, uh, to me, it didn't seem like it was just after. It seemed like she had maybe just depression her whole t- life, if that is, you know, what it could have been. But she didn't sound like she was already of a healthy mind before. Yeah, um, oh, I'm trying to think the because the the timing. What is it you say the the office and there's the um, oh, what happens in the office? I'm trying. To, 
I, I'm thinking so this happens all. She was in a different department, but the yeah. work comes uh, became too strenuous. Was like with the typewriter opening up the box or something, and so she was moved to a different department where the work is not as strenuous. Um, but then also the baby was early, so it seems I don't know. To me, I had the impression that she was laying the groundwork, like the author was laying the groundwork that the protagonist was already unstable, right? She couldn't be left to be just one of these women who rests at home because she'd probably be one of those neurotics. I think that's what she says. Um, all right, just th- before she goes into the telegrams and then, yeah, the officer says she plunged into the work without pursuing a thought and then, then it just reads the telegram. And the telegrams are all after the baby. So it's, it, it could be... Um, and it also says like each morning the pile of papers that greeted her were a little higher. So there's, I don't know, I got, I got the impression that it was, yeah, because after the baby's born, you wouldn't really be in the office, you'd be at home. So, but then she's writing the telegrams after, no, she, the telegram, the, when she, her first telegram, which is after the baby, which is written after the baby, comes in straight after that. So there's... Okay, I'm... Dean, help, yeah, help I us out. I don't have a copy, so I can't <laughs> reference what I'm, I mean, so... No, yeah. yeah, I'm... Dean, what have you got? Um, no, well, for me, there's obviously the, the build-up where she, she doesn't seem to be quite, you know... In, okay, wait, stop, okay. I've got managing no, no. her faculties quite well, but... I, I take post- back what I said, sorry. Sorry, yeah. Dee, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. She, she was seeing a psychologist before. So, okay. So, no, no. There we go. Carry okay. on. There we go. Yeah. So, so she I was mean, unstable the, before. Yeah, she's she was seeking help for something at the beginning. Um, mm-hmm. But post birth, she just, I mean, she just seemed absolutely enthralled and delighted with with her baby. Um, I mean, obviously, to to the point of absolute ignorance of anything else but but yeah that's that's what I was taking away from it that she was you know kind of uh, for lack of a better phrase like just having beer goggles like or just uh, blinkers on where you only seeing the good um, she does it doesn't even occur to her that that the baby is um, disabled no, it's interesting because even when she says like, oh, when are you going to start using a, a potty and stop using these diapers? Um, and the baby says, you know, some whatever the answer was at 10 months old. Um, when she still has, and she's already developed teeth, like you're, you're thinking like this child is not normal. This, but the, yeah, then you think afterwards, you're like, oh, of course the child can't potty train. Child will never be able to potty train. Um. Yeah, it's interesting because then when you think about the interactions with the child afterwards, at the after the twist, where you find out she's just a worm, um, that you're like, oh, that makes sense. And yeah, how she, how the protagonist twists things to say, yeah, see, everything's fine because she can do this without mentioning what she can. Like you're saying before, you know, she's swaddled in a blanket. All she sees is the face. She lists. You know the beautiful face. She's targeting her, to direct her attention to a specific area, and that's it. Yeah, I like in the telegrams when she when she says things like, um, "Oh yeah, the doctor was saying some nonsense about mutations, blah blah,", blah. but then, um, you know, but then, you know, then uh, then she says the good things about him. Wait, what does she say? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, because she says how they can spot, like, the big mutations early. Um, mm. But then says they have, like, doesn't actually say they dish, or maybe she does. I don't, can't remember. I don't think she says, like, they didn't say anything about that to me. But just saying that they can these days. But yeah, it was interesting, yeah, how, she, how the, the protagonist kind of obscures things to suit her view of the world. Yeah, and it was 
you know, like on for, maybe for us, we would all think like, hey, if if your baby was born like that, we would we would definitely understand that a mother would still love their child. Um, but we would, but it is a point of difference that would naturally come up, and you say, you know, but it's a, uh, you know, it's a child with uh, undeveloped limbs, and it's a disability, I guess we we might say, and yeah. and we would treat it differently but we would but the love for the child which is the title of the story that that only a, a mother I guess is telling us that you know it's the love that only a mother would have um and yes. maybe only and a mother would yep I just wanted to raise another interesting point how she says about the infanticide and how they mm-hmm. usually accuse the father so that also harks back to the title because yeah it's kind of uh yeah, only a mother could love a mutation like that, so, meaning like the father can't or won't. Well, my understanding with infanticide is that it's predominantly done by women. and it, In the story, she says that they usually accuse yeah. the men. But I'm wondering if that's the protagonist sort of twisting something, because I, I don't know. It's like, in, I, I thought it was well known throughout history that that's generally what happens is that because you know when mothers don't have the support these things are the things the things that they struggle with this is like a sad thing that that happens well i i was simply taking it as a plot point yeah no yeah definitely um but as as a yeah as reading it i that was something that i thought oh well why would why would she say that when it is normally considered that the mother is the one that kills the baby not not the father. Because it doesn't suit her title. Mm. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, she's trying to make the point that only a mother can love a mutation like that. And so mm. she sets the con- the historical context, the social context of, you know, fathers aren't as accepting. And she makes the point kind of like, oh, but you'll be fine. You can come visit the child. It- it'll be great. Um, when actually she's like sowing the seed that a kind of, I mean, it kind of questions as well. Maybe she was lying also because of fear, because she thought maybe he will do something. So she, like a part of her brain is saying, yeah, keep it secret, even to yourself. Mm. It was, I found it interesting when she referred to the nurse as like, it was a battle axe nurse. And so mm-hmm. sort of like, you know, this is, you know, that's the bad nurse, the one, and we're, we're probably thinking, like, well, well, the nurse is probably telling the truth, and she's probably, she may not be the best nurse at telling you some hard news about your baby, but, but, you know, I'm not sure that as a mother and that you're telling, that you're helping the situation, and look, if there, if postpartum depression is part of this equation, that's sort of, okay, you see how the situation gets tricky, yeah, because it's interesting, once you find out the truth, that, that and you then re-examine her interactions and what she says, excuse me, about everyone, because it's all, it's predominantly through her, her filter, with the telegrams and the letters. So. Yeah. All right. What else? It's a very short story. Dean, was there anything you'd uh, like to add? Anything that's... Um, I quite liked how they just the story just kind of drops off, and it kind of it, it kind of leaves you to draw your own conclusion on what's happening or what is going to happen next. Mm. Um, because I mean, it, it's it is a topic that has presented itself in society quite often with uh, um, like like mutations d- during pregnancy and, and then what do you do post-pregnancy and um, yeah so it, it allows you to make up your own mind of what's, what's going to happen next yeah, yeah so- of these issues like the mutation handicapped children raising them um 
the issue of infanticide, the threat of nuclear mutations, like all of this kind of adds to this pot, this boiling pot, where she is losing sense of reality, which I think fundamentally, for me, is the point is that she's lost touch with reality, probably even before the pregnancy. Yeah, she was definitely having some some reality based issues before. Yeah. Um, and it, it's, I mean, it probably wasn't wasn't helped much by the the husband being away all the time. And, mm. Um, because I mean, stress ends up exacerbating those issues. But uh, but yeah, it's, it's I mean, for something it was written in the forties, it's. It's, I mean, like even now, you know, 80 years later, it's still something that we can quite easily draw parallels to. Yeah. Have you got any more thoughts on the pacing of Dean, as you're saying, with the uh, with the, with the uh, uh, telegrams or, or letters or whatever they were? Yeah, was that was it the telegrams? Like, because it's. February, when it starts in February and it finishes around November and then Yeah, I did like, find myself constantly looking up to the date to, to kind of see, like, judge how much time it passed. Well, when uh, uh, is it Hank? Hank, he in his first one, you know, in his uh, telegrams are all in capitals so, you know, it's, that's um, a bit intense, but uh, he says Oh, he says, um, I don't know if it was like code or sp like military speak for time. What did he say? Like, I'll see you, um, what was it? Like something like 10.04 or something. And then it goes, stop. And it, you, well, through all the messages, it says, um, stop. And it doesn't mean like the end of the line or something in the, the military. Because her ones are like letters, that's, right? That's, that's just how you give a telegram. Stop means the end of a sentence. Yeah, but her ones, her ones are just like paragraphs, Letters. clean. Yeah, so she's sending a letter, and then he's sending a telegram back. Yeah. Okay, and uh, but what was what did, what was the time? I've got it in front of me, but I can't see. He says like ten o four, or then, and then when he does says when he does come back, he says like eleven o five. You know, don't meet me. Um, what was it? Yeah, he says, yeah, don't meet me, love, love, love. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, when he gets there, they're quite cool. Like, there's no real embrace. Like, he, they, one of them touches a face, and, like, that's it. But there's no, like, you haven't seen each other for a year and a half, which at the same time I understand because you're kind of strangers to each other. But at the other side, it's kind of like, you haven't seen each other for 18 months. Yeah, so he says we'll arrive four o ten. Is that a time? But he says it in February. But they don't. He doesn't see her for almost a year, right? What? What? Uh, I felt that was sort of. I I gathered from that that he came to see the baby, um, or maybe see, came to see her in the hospital and then immediately left that little passage. Because she says later, like, take a real leave. Mm. And, like, it, the real is italicized. And his next one is sent, because yeah, that one is sent to the hospital, and the next one is sent to her at her place in New York. Mm. Okay. Interesting. But yeah, telegrams are pretty much always written in capitals because it's like an automated machine um, that types them out from the Morse code. But I understand what you mean. It does look angry. Yeah, I was, I was thinking about... Um, and, and also, it's very limited in how much they can send, right? Or mm -hmm. it's very brief. And so you sort of... If you're receiving these messages... You know, you know how we get text messages and then we think, oh, is that what they meant? It's like, oh, no, they didn't. <laughs> you know, 
uh, you know, the messages which you could interpret differently. Very, you know, brief. It's like, well, tell us more. Did you mean that sarcastically? Or, I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, I wonder how much that played on her as well. But, I don't know. It seems at the beginning, like we said, she was seeing a psychologist and then after, and then during the birth, or, you know, seeing the, um, the undeveloped uh, limbs and then after the fact her being in denial when the doctors and nurses were um, communicating with her about the situation yeah but no it's an inter- it's a good point because yeah that lack of communication from her husband from the father like it it must could only have compounded her feelings of yeah, she kept writing and losing of re- loss of reality because like she's she's on her own yeah mm. But then, yeah, she was also said, just remembered, um, how the nurses were no good. Because when she got home, she basically had to learn how to do everything herself. It was all different. And, like, I'm just thinking, yeah, because now with the nurses, they were probably saying, take into account the fact that she doesn't have limbs. So you're going to have to do it like this, not like a traditional baby. Mm. Whereas when she went home, she was like, no, she's normal. This is how I wash a baby. Whatever. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, you look back at everything. I quit. I should have read it again, really, to then point out all the ways that the author had suddenly kind of set the groundwork without you really connecting the dots. Yeah, it sort of it sort of um leaves it definitely it definitely left me questioning some things where you you're left to sort of fill the gaps yourself in um, her state of mind. And and like you say, it's laid the groundwork for it. It's like, well, that, this is the situation. And and I wonder how much of, you know, the history of, because I just don't know. Um, so this is me just going out on a, a limb here. Uh, to that how, I guess, not horrible, but how, yeah, horrific, like giving uh, birth to a child was back then in general and the lack of because you think of the support that we have today it's just and i mean i've gone through it twice um it is thorough to say the least um everything i mean i've gone to classes for men to breastfeed and it is (laughs) it's hilarious because obviously we don't do it but it's like for us to understand like what was happening (laughs) like there are courses for that and uh i just can't even remember why I went because I was just so excited to have my first child right so I was like yeah I'm gonna do that and it was it was pretty um it was hilarious when I did it and but it was but anyway to the point of uh there, there's just so much support and and I don't want to say everyone gets all the support but there are so many interesting things that we do today to support um new new mothers or any mother as sorry um with i guess complications that may arise and on one hand but also just uh what you should do in when there's a new baby so there's that which... wow sure sounds fun having kids <laughs> you can you can hear yeah you can hear um Yes, you can hear them. Yes. Very much so, yeah. I, I'm in a room by myself, but you can still hear them. You, you can never escape your kids. Yeah, Hong Kong. <laughs> yeah. However. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, it's interesting. And like, yeah, well, much like any book we discuss, even the one last week, there's always things that you don't really take into account until it's something's pointed out, and then you're like, oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's interesting little book, interesting little story. So, actually, I do want to say one more thing that I think, um, I think we talked about how there were some gaps and that we sort of fill ourselves. I, 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 I think there were some areas that I would have liked more, um, 
more in regards to her state of mind, you know, which there is obviously she's experienced some kind of, um, you, I don't even know what the right term is, whether it's psychosis or depression or um, so, some kind of, it's whatever it is that's affecting her well-being, I, I kind of didn't want to guess, do the guesswork there, but I I'm feel like it was like one of those thrillers on one hand where I, I don't know, I would have liked a little bit more from the story to kind of go, well, this is, um, it didn't have to tell me explicitly. It was, it could have been, there could have been more clues around it and in regards to what it was. Cause I think like postpartum is, is the, obviously the after, cause before postpartum, oh no, no, I'm wrong. Cause Fresh when, when, well, when, when, yeah, well, when, when you're pregnant, you've got the hormones in your body that is, because you've got your baby's hormones and they're interacting with your own hormones and I've never experienced it, but, um, but that's the thing. And so who knows that could have been the thing that was, uh, the reason why she's seeing a psychologist. Um, so I guess I would have liked more hints about, even if it doesn't want to tell me explicitly, I would have liked to have had some more hints about it, which I think the story didn't, didn't do. Um, you know, um, what would have been really good for this week? Warren. Oh. <laughs> a specialist, yeah. Yeah, you're just talking about that, like not knowing what to call it. It's like he'd know. Yeah, I would have been, I would have been called out instantly, and I would have, I would have shut up. <laughs> I would have been like, yep, not yeah, my. Yeah, in, in informed pers- perspective. Yeah. Yep. No, um, none of us would know. But like, yeah, yeah. Look, it's all just conjecture because, as you say, it was all hint and we had to connect the dots. So. Yeah, I must say, it's something that he has had to face a few times uh, with work. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's just... common, I'm sure. Frickin' Warren, ruining our lives. He could have been here giving us insight, but no. Did you invite him? No, I didn't. <laughs> That's why. I'm, I mean, my life isn't ruined without him. He's a great guy and all, but we, I think we're managing. <laughs> yeah. We'll get him for another guest appearance. Especially when it's psychological. Yes. Guest speaker. Um, well, is there a... Um, Anything else, or shall we move on to scores? Well, I I do want to say this last thing, and maybe it's not about the story itself, but, um, you know, whenever I read or watch something, I... I oh, wow, that's a noise in my face. Um, uh, is that I, I realise that I haven't really read or seen any movies about, like, depression with, like, women having babies. There's, there might be, but I just can't think of anything off the top of my head that is like this so that was you know a sort of this is an issue or or like a subject and maybe because it's horrific that's not attractive to to be you know like it's not an entertaining story right um i that's my firm opinion this is not an entertaining story like um you know it may be it may be another critique of it um is that it's it only scrapes the surface of science fiction. Like there's definitely the science with um, the nuclear stuff and the, the microwave that makes meals where she pushes a button and it just makes, is that right? The breakfast cooker or something. But, yeah. um, you know, that, that's like surface stuff about the science stuff. And I don't know. I'm still, I'm still glad I read the story, but I kind of thought, mm. there's a new movie coming out. Um, yeah. I don't remember the name. But it's the lady who played Princess Margaret in The Crown, the first two series of The Crown, Vanessa something. Right. Um, she plays the the lead, and it's Shah Shia LaBeouf as the partner. <laughs> Vanessa um, is not a name that I hear in, as like act, like as an actor. Can you name uh, another yeah, actor called know. Vanessa? I've definitely been to school with a Vanessa, but uh, and there's. Vanessa Hutchins? Who's that? Yes. 
Who's that? See? The lady in this movie, Pieces of a Woman. That's the movie. And uh, But it's not about mutation, but it's definitely about um, depression and, because she, spoiler alert, loses the child. Um, right. And so it's about that grief and anger and loss, all that mixed up. Um, it's It looks very good from the trailer that I've seen. Um, but I don't know if it's out. I think it got moved back like everything else in life this year um so i'm not sure when it's coming out but yeah it's not a common topic because a it only really applies from you know movie executives point of view to 50 percent of the population mm. um and it's yeah it's not an it's not a nice happy topic and it's not about superheroes so it's not gonna make money yeah I- I know, I'm trying but to think of more that these kind of stories are explored because it is about the two of them and about their combined loss. Like they, each, they both lost a child. Um, the more that that conversation is had. What was it called? Pieces of a woman. Pieces of a woman. Right on. I will check it out. It yeah. I... Her- I'm thinking. I'm thinking now that I'm thinking about it. There's def- it's definitely subplots, or you know, because babies and crazy women are definitely in a lot of um, a lot of uh, subplots um, within movies. And yeah, but yeah, it's it's not a, it's not a, it's not like um it's not going to get me out of my chair, run to the cinema to go watch a movie like that. Like anything that's confronting, I guess, is definitely. It challenges you, right? And so, and so, uh, you know, you try to put stave those things off so that you don't have to talk about them. Or, yeah. Um, well, both of you can watch it. It's on Netflix. Yay! It's on, it's on Netflix. I got Netflix. Sweet. All right. Here we go. Here we go. I think we're going to go to the scores now. Unless, do you guys have anything else to say? No. Cool. Nope. Who is first? Should I go first? Um, I never go first. I'm going to go first. There we go. Um, I'm going to give this score, this book, the story, the score. Oh. Because I quite liked it. So it was short. Um. Uh, Three hundred and forty-seven. Three hundred and forty-seven. I'm just yeah. repeating it to um buy time while I refresh the score. Let's go. Uh, well, I can wax lyrical because <laughs> yeah, go go. Yes. It um, yeah, it raised some good points. I like the perspective. I like that the the author like laid breadcrumbs that you could follow. And then it wasn't really until the twist at the end, which was so pivotal, it shone a new light on those breadcrumbs and it helped you kind of connect the dots and follow the trail. And it changed the story because now you had the new information. And I like that it wasn't obvious, but once you realized, um, it was. So I like it. But also, yeah, there was, I don't know, I would have liked more. I would have liked it to maybe be a bit longer or more more of her life, like you guys were saying. Um, a bit more insight into her and her her life, what's going on around her. Yeah, so I'll come in with my score and I and I think to those points, yeah, the the wanting more, I think um you know, on one hand it definitely takes text the boxes of short story you know there's a central idea and you know it's carried through to sort of a question at the end which we can you know we're, which we're left to fill the gaps and so I you know I, I but I do wish that there was a little bit more within within the story and um, you know on one hand I didn't like this story because it's confronting. 
so then you know i've got to think about more of like what i admire this you know the author to make us think about these topics and you know you realize how we're all even if you haven't had kids you, you know you're still like other friends having babies around us like it's um it's something that we we experience and so the and they're important things that we experience and so um so I I um I give this score a three oh five and well I'm I'm gonna let Dean wax lyrical while I type in the numbers here. Um yeah. <laughs> okay. so I, I just realized yeah that it's I mean I wait wait to you know so I don't I because I can't say I like the story because I feel, on one hand, I'm so confronted with um, tragedy that it's like, it's like I just don't think it's the right word, but it, do you know what I mean? It's like there's some kind of admiration of the story that is, that I am thinking about and, you know, having experienced the, I guess, the hormonal um, changes of the person who gives the baby that... Um, it didn't, you know, my hormones didn't change, um, but I can tell you that. But um, but I definitely saw the other side, and I and I definitely had ex- my own experiences of the WTF. Um, I did, you know, and I didn't have the tools um, at the time to deal with what I should do, and and uh, so it was. I guess it's yeah. I guess it's a topic that's near to my heart, but it's like. It's not one. It's not something I want to celebrate. Did, have I made my point about that? Sorry, I keep, feel like I keep repeating myself. Um, okay, let me pop. Yeah. Dean, you talk. Let me do. <laughs> okay. My score is up. Three or five. Um, Three or five. Yeah. I'm going to score it based on. It's a short story, so it is short. It's a short story. That's great. Um. It's not really sci-fi-ish for me, but yeah, it did. It did bring up some uh, some good points, and uh, so this for me there wasn't there wasn't that there was an overwhelming negatives about it, but for me there also wasn't like just resounding positives. So I'm gonna go with a. 290, 290. All right. Wax lyrical for a few more seconds while I bring up your score. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, like, it's like you said, it's, it's, it's a, it is a hard topic. I mean, no one, no one wants to be confronted with something that is so personal and so tragic. Um, and uh, I can only imagine that film that, that Sarah was talking about. It's, you're not going to walk back, believe, you know, after watching that, you're going to go, oh, I'm ready for the day. I'm going to make some good choices. No, it's probably going to make you reflect and, and you know, examine your own, your own heart and your own thoughts a bit. And probably leave you feeling not great. Um, but yeah, it's, it is part of reality and it is something that probably gets easier the more one speaks about it. All right, yeah. so yeah, and thank you for doing that because I forgot about the decimal places, but I fixed that while you were talking. So, <laughs> perfecto. Um, right on, right on. Let's do this now. I'm gonna. Ch- I should change this. You know how with aggregate, I don't even know what aggregate means. I feel you do it a lot. Yeah, I don't even know what it means. Like aggregate, it sounds really sort of. Sounds really um strong. Let me. Should we just say the average? <laughs> should we just? I know what that means. Anyway, or whatever. Let's uh let's see what our average is. Maybe next time I'll change it. Um, our average score. Uh, so we read the book that only a mother by Judith Judith Merrill from Canada, and. If we can have some musical instruments to announce our average score. Oh, 
It is 314. Not Yay! Cool. I mean, sh I should have some applause after it. But, um, okay, so that puts us. That's the applause. A crowd. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So it puts us between Nightfall and Harris Bergeron. And there we go. Nightfall was 316 and Harris, Harris and Bergeron was 301. There we go. I'm going to take a look what was... Our lowest score was last week, 157. This is double that. <laughs> um, so, Stephen, your choice next week? My choice next week. Oh, I've... I forgot Have you thought about it? Yeah, I've I've got it. Um and yeah, I've got it here. I forgot it's it's one of those titles that uh, I feel like um anyway. Like that only a mother that we read I kept saying to myself only that's a mother and and uh no. Got that wrong. And then this this is another title By His Bootstraps we're going to read next week. Okay. Right. I was I was going to do the cryptocurrency one, but I don't know. It was a bit of a it was a bit of a letdown that story as I thought. And uh, this other one by his bootstraps. Um, there's a bit of time travel in this next one, so that's kind of cool. Okay. Look forward to it. Awesome. Cool. Alright, so that's the end of a clip. See you guys next week. Yep, yeah, see you then. Cool. Cheers, cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.